I've never been in a situation where I've, I've worked in a different company. I've never done an MBA. So some of the things that I've learned are by trial and error. And because of that, I have one advantage, which is because I didn't know how to do it properly, I've tried some things that haven't been done elsewhere. We've tried some approaches that haven't been done elsewhere. And I think some of those things, uh, the record shows have worked very well. And I think if I can um, put some of those ideas up for people to you know, grab onto and try, and these are often about realizing much more directly the importance of the asset of the people you have. You know, whether it's our business, technology, or it's a different business, in the final analysis, it comes down to people. And if you free them up and you give them flexibility, because of all of the uh, leverage there is in the modern world, of the fact that we have all this you know, IT infrastructure and communication that are in now, freeing up people brings you a return. Collapsing them down into process and rules kills that return. That's an idea I'd like to see people taking more of. I don't know about leader, but I'll tell you who really inspired me. Um, when I was younger, I read a book by Davis Sobel called Longitude. And uh, it's the book about a chap called John Harrison. And there was a, a fundamental problem of time. It was the biggest problem, which was how do you work out where a ship is? And the establishment of the time were astronomers. And they thought that they might find a way of solving this problem by astronomy. And a northern clockmaker, uh, created the solution, the chronometer, so that you knew what the time was and you could take measurements. Right? He had to fight the system all the way. They were out to get him. He was so convinced that he was right, he walked from Newcastle to London. He overcame the bureaucracy. And finally, he was proved right. And what you realized is, as long as you're not having to walk from Newcastle to London, no matter what you're having to overcome, it's not as hard a job as he had to do. I don't think there's one person, you know, it's one of these things where you can, um, you can look at a whole series of people uh, and sort of take little bits of them, you know. Uh, my PhD supervisor at Cambridge, who was someone who was always on the basis of everything's possible. Um, we had a wonderful director who joined us here, was a chap called uh, John McMonagall, who had um, run large businesses. And he came in and he brought in a lot of experience, large business, but he did it in a very special way. Which is he turned up to these bunch of enthusiasts who'd never done a budget. And he managed to get us to do a budget, with, but the trick was he didn't take away the enthusiasm. Uh, so, you know, you look at that. Some of my own employees, you know, I'm just stunned by some of the things that they do. And, you, you know, you, you just stand back in awe of that. And you see, I, I see myself more as the ringmaster in the sense of, I just create the space and I let them do it. Well, you know, it's going to sound like a very um, sort of cliché comment, but I've just always admired excellence. I don't care what it is, you know, whether it's watching a falcon, uh, you know, on the wing or, uh, you know, watching uh, uh, a great musician or indeed a great graffiti artist. It doesn't really matter. You know, what I love is seeing someone just pushing their, their art, whatever it is, uh, you know, to the limit of doing something incredibly talented. And, uh, you know, there's lots of things I would love to be able to do uh, that I can't do, uh, but it turns out that I've got a reasonable shot at running a technology business. Well, one thing that people don't know is I'm partially deaf, and uh, this leads to the fact that um, I have to lip read. So, for example, if you're a long way away or if I happen to be looking a different way, I'll often miss what people say at the beginning of their sentence. But, you know, I have to get through that. So I end up in a situation where I will often say something that bears no relationship whatsoever to the question asked. Now, in most industries, that would, I'm afraid, be an impediment. In technology, though, it works very well because when you say something that bears no relation to what you're asked, people think you're a visionary, and that goes down incredibly well.